Why, hello? Ooh. How is everyone today? As you can see, I'm kind of geared up at the moment. Going to the Sharks game later today. Hoping for another win. Be nice. <laughs> Unrelated to my stream normally, but I had to get ready because I'm going to basically cut out the moment the stream's done and, and make a run for it. You know. So how is everyone today? Just gotta drop, grab a drink real quick. Get that out of the way early. Dr. Pepper is so bad for you, but sometimes it's so good. So what are we doing today? What were we doing yesterday? Oh yeah, we were looking over our options. We've done a little bit more research. Uh, I reached out on some of the overlanding forums just to see if anyone else had any ideas. Not a whole lot of comments, but, um, you know, pointing me at different lifting options, things along those lines. My biggest worry is that I'm just doing something that is a known bad idea. <laughs> that would be, that, that's my, that, that's what I don't want to do. You know what I mean? Like, that's no fun. You know what? Let me adjust this real quick. Yoink. Yeah, that's a little better. I got off center somehow. Not, I mean, not to you, but to me. Anyway, if this is your first time here, my name's David. Uh, today I'm in Sharks fan mode. But um, I started doing this just as a way to keep my projects alive and working and basically set some time aside for myself to do it and uh, keep that schedule and work on these projects and get these things done that I want to get done and see them through. It's weird to say that uh, sometimes working on projects for yourself leaves you in a feeling of, oh, I should be doing something else. I should be doing something with my time that's that's good for me or, you know, it, there's always reasons not to do things for yourself. And uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is <laughs> go out there and do it, but uh, find something that that makes you stick to it if you if it's something you really enjoy. And all in all, this has become a hobby unto itself, and I find it relaxing. There are days where I'm just like, ah, I don't want to stream, but at the same time, like, no, I've got to do it. And once once I hit that start streaming button, I kind of remember why I'm doing it. I remember immediately that it makes a difference. It makes me do the things I enjoy doing and hopefully share it with all of you. And uh, maybe one of you guys or girls or whatever you want to be, uh, take something from it and go and do something cool yourselves. So without much further ado, I'm going to get back into some of the... Uh, trailer build stuff, we're working on how are we going to lift this tent up uh, because I want it to be beneath the back of the the car while moving, um, but above it when parked. Big reason for that, uh, in case you're wondering, is gas mileage. Obviously, uh, it'd be better if it's inside the Wyndham envelope in my uh, completely guesstimate experience <laughs> but also I would rather not be towing something around that's you know seven feet tall uh, it would just be better if it was the, the lower it is the less tippy it is uh, I don't know uh, 
I don't have anything scientific to say why this is, but it just feels that way to me, especially I'm already driving a rather large vehicle. All right, so with that being said, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, thanks. Hope you stick around. If you're watching on uh, Twitch and lurking and just haven't said anything, say hi or don't, you know, you do you. Let's get to it. Dun, dun, dun. Oops, I got my wrong. I really like this OBS Blade program, except for how everything's laid out in it. It's less than ideal for what I would prefer. Bink, and where's my button? There it is. Ah. All right. We'll prop you and make sure we have our the audio the audio settings are too far away from the transition settings if that makes sense it's like having to scroll up and down while i'm trying to talk <laughs> less than ideal I, I, I need to set up some macros where i can just be like button 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 and then i can probably push this over to uh just watching chat which will be useful when I'm in the shop working because I can just have this floating around and you know worry about getting welding and grinding dust on a hundred dollar tablet as opposed to my laptop <laughs> um, oh I did actually get a shipment notification for the Starlink I was really hoping to kind of go through a setup or something with everyone and just see what that looks like show what that looks like and maybe do some testing but uh apparently ronaldo is still delivering in san francisco i don't know why fedex decided to let me know that hey your delivery driver's name is ronaldo like am i gonna blame ronaldo for them not planning his route well enough to get him to get it to me on time no, it was supposed to be here by 11.30. That's FedEx's fault. Ronaldo, I see you. I understand. <laughs> Take your break. Get some lunch. It's not, it's not on you. <laughs> Oops. See? See what I'm talking about? There. I'm also hoping that this time, for real, I'll create, the, well, OBS will create my uh, closed captioning file. Closed captioning should be available on uh, Twitch because I'm sending it, but I was never saving it. So I've just been using the, the Google Auto closed captions, which, I mean, <laughs> realistically at the end of the day this thing is just using google to create those cap that caption file but you know uh i would kind of rather like just in case I, i'd rather make sure that i put those captions there and if you know something looks wrong at least i can edit it uh if it becomes an issue we shall see when is our... Do I still have my Pokemon up? I don't still have my Pokemon up. All right. Sidetrack time. Let's get the Pokemon up. Um, only take a sec. Promise. We'll export and do my trade. Might as well, right? I need something grass-like. Am I blind? I thought I had one. Grass, 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 grass. Have I traded all my grass types? What the heck? Bug type, your rock. Ah, there we go. I don't think he was very good. No. Wait, but he is grass. Okay. 
Making sure. Goodbye. And I got a lamp. That's horrible. How much longer do I need to keep this charade up? One more trade. All right. That is probably going to happen before. Well, I mean, it'll happen near the end of the stream. That's what I mean. <laughs> All right. So let's get into this. If you weren't with me yesterday, this is the height of the car. This is the height of the trailer. And this is kind of what I'm looking at for my ex fully extended height. And I think I was going to drop it down about 20 inches. Which everything here is... Uh, uh, I'm scaling it by 10, so... It actually is just going to go down two inches. Now, the one thing with this, the, the way I'm looking at it right now, I guess I should probably. And I know I'm doing it on Tinkercad. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's the thing I, I'm good with. Uh, well, good is subjective. So I'm trying to decide if I'm going to put this here and actually punch a hole in the side of this, which isn't that difficult to repair um, if I want to put it back. The interesting part is going to be how I affix this in. I'll probably have to do like a U-bolt and maybe weld the U-bolt to this channel, this channel being this exterior one. I was also considering the idea of just putting a bend in it or even like trying to kick this out to this level, but like this doesn't show it, but there is a, uh, a bend in the, a, a roll around the edge as well. Let's get this going. Uh, trailer pics. I need to get some better trailer pictures too. Yeah, yeah, they don't even they don't show the roll either. Uh, but I do think that it's on the manual. That's terrifying. Google now shows that I visit this. PDF often. Maybe I should just download it. But yeah, see, it's got this little lip that goes all the way around it. And I keep trying to click and drag around. <laughs> it didn't work the first time. It's not going to suddenly work this time. But like, these things are watertight and that, that's another thing I'm gonna have to work my way through is it's watertight it's, I was thinking about this this is another one of those like I sh sat up in bed like oh god it's watertight I need to make sure that I have a cover like this one and that cover needs to work with whatever rack I put on because while it does have drains in it, I'd kind of prefer not to need them, if that makes sense. So, anyway, where was I? I was back at the ranch. So we were deciding, basically, if I cut it, if I cut it, then I need to figure out how to make it so that the any tarp or cover that I put around or put over it either then goes up to the tent and kind of creates a sheet so it, it becomes more like a a skirt <laughs> for the whole thing um, I'm not going to be able to just put a hard cover over it unless I guess I could have a cover that goes up over 
and down. And just set an upper limit. The, the trick is, the tricky part of that is though that I'm not going to be able to really open that cover because there's going to be a tent on top of it. Uh, so whatever I put here, I need to be able to work around it. I need it to keep the, the rain snow out, but I need it to be something that can get out of the way quickly when I need it. So I'm probably making a skirt, honestly. And I wonder if I could do that in a, well, I'm gonna burn that bridge when I come to it and I'm not there yet. All right, so let's go back to here. We need about 20 inches of throw. Uh, one of the things that came up was linear actuators. As a potential fix. Um, I'm looking for about 20 inches of travel ish. Actually, I need to consider that too, because like right now, that would put the very bottom here At what? Half inch. So 20 might be excessive. So if we go back up, uh, maybe. Oh, what am I thinking? Let's go back down. 0 0.5. No. Minus 1. What was the size of this? So that's that's six inches. I need to remember. <laughs> it, it's not not five eighths of an inch, but it's it's about six inches of clearance that I would have there. So then, if I look here, and I take a make it. 4.2 What happened? Is my size off? Here we are. Oops. All right, height. 42 inches. So why now are you not 42 inches? Oh, because it's loaded. <laughs> no, that's not why. I must have at some point... ...changed this height. 
So if I add another, Yeah, so that's that's not a terrible terrible thing right there. All right, now like I said, now we're looking at this guy. So I'm looking at two inch Esper. Do I still have time? Let's see. Yay, caught it. I meant to do ooh, I meant to do a great ball or something because I need to get the last 14. You know what I mean? So what that does that gives me just enough to where I can still probably stack these two two storage boxes. So there's there's one underneath it. And I suppose if I want to be particularly fancy. I could make this, since I'm putting these up, right, I could make that like a drain system? I don't know. Again, <laughs> it's a problem I'll, that's a bridge I'll burn when I come to it, I think. So let's look back at this. So this is my external. I think I set it, yeah, it's, I've got it set right now at 10 inches. I make it a hole to make sure it's off of that edge. It is a 64th low enough. I don't think it is. I think I need to grab this, drop it here. I need you. to be zero. So now if I cut a two inch hole, is that too far back? I think it might be. I think I want it closer to the wheel well. I can kind of have it line up. I need it to be it and correct me if I'm wrong here, but my thinking is that I need these posts to basically be centered over the axle. Uh, need is a strong word, but it, they're probably the most stable if they're as close over the axle as possible. Because I can't imagine them being farther out is helpful. And being closer means that the cross beam or the cross connection from here to here is a little bit stronger. Um, I'm probably just going to make that something that bolts as opposed to something that's actually welded because the weld is going to be across this way. I 
I was thinking about this last night as well. I'm going to have to weld all of this basically up in the air. Because I don't have a welding table. I mean, I guess I could try and weld it on the ground, but... I feel like that is a, a recipe for... Well, the ground seems straight. <laughs> Whereas if it's up, I, I can set it in place. I can set it where I want it. Weld or do the tack weld and then level hammer, do the rest of the welds. I'm sure someone's going to tell me I'm wrong. Well, if I, if I am wrong, I'd like for someone to tell me I'm wrong, but, uh, it seems the best way to my small mind. So now let's take this guy and we're going to put you I want to be mindful really of this, this is zero. Maybe third, no, uh, 3.7. So basically 37 inches. I want to be mindful of making sure that I have space to put other stuff here. Um, since I've got the water and the power right here, this area here and this area here are kind of going to be dedicated to that. This back space, I'm probably going to end up with a gas can, uh, maybe a backup water jug. I'm not sure. But here, this side I think is going to be like, um, well, here I'm going to have a power outlet hopefully feeds this freezer i'm really interested in what i'm gonna have to do to get this to stay there but and <laughs> if it even makes sense um but yeah there's i'm thinking power outlet here probably a second power outlet just so that i have one on the side and then it's gonna be like a water attachment and then this side will kind of be the same sort of deal it'll probably be a power attachment and then a water inlet i may separate it so that the power is on this side just so that there's not an issue um but i also want to have a box that has like all of the cables because i am going to have my hope is to have a plug that goes from the trailer uh, to the car so that the batteries can be charged by the car when I'm driving. Um, and then also a plug that can go to shore power so I can charge the batteries off of wherever I'm staying, if that's an option. A whole lot of options, right? It's, it's going to be, you know, it's probably not a bad idea to have like a box like here. Uh, let's look at that real quick. Let's look for a solar fuse box. Yeah, see something. Uh, Vivo keeps popping up. And Renogy, or Renology, as I was stupidly calling it before. Like, they have, and I'm going to have their equipment more than likely. I'm 95% certain that they're the one I'm going with. What I don't see... I don't see anything... what? 
Uh, I don't see anything that's like... Here's a, a cabinet to put all this crap in. I, they have the, the charge controller, but it's not in anything. So I'm pretty sure I'm looking for like one of these little boxes. I mean, that's kind of nice to just have a disconnect, but I'm pretty sure I'm looking for something like this, where I can have my fuses. Uh, my solar panels are, are going to be a suitcase, is what they're calling it. It's a, it's a thing that, I guess, uses one of their connectors, so that's going to have to go. I'll probably have shore and then those things right next to each other, right? But, like, all of that needs to be routed somewhere. I need the, the separation between their... Oh, you know what? That's, that's something I haven't even looked at yet. Like, this is the battery box, but that's just holding a couple of batteries. I've got the water underneath the battery box, and I'm leaving space for plumbing. But I'm wondering, well, I've got these this side area. And like I said, I, I was really considering putting something just right here that's gonna house all the cables anyway. Let's let's look at like what do I have to put in an enclosure? Because I'm looking at a particular bundle that they have. This one. So like this, this inverter needs to be inside of something, right? One of these is the converter for the car. I think that's the battery shunt. Where's the, oh yeah, let's go to learn more. I'm still not even a hundred percent certain because like this is the kit I'm looking at right and it, I've been sitting on this page every single stream because it's got their their app the the Renology one or Renology, Renology one core as a part of it but then it doesn't give you the option to add it. I still haven't called them to say, hey, what does it mean? Um, but what I'm here for is what's in the box. So they've got the, the alternator. All right, so that's the alternator and that's the inverter. So this bit is going inside the car. The rest of this has to be on the trailer. I do think that the inverter can actually just be like screwed to the bottom of the, the battery box. I don't think that'll be an issue. Excessive space op occupation due to weight. So, <laughs> today on making fun of companies' web pages, <laughs> except, I mean, I'm guessing that that's their con. All right, so what's number eight here? Okay, eight is their circuit breaker. And nine is their fuse box. What's 13? Oh, the battery switch, okay. And six, oh, that's the battery. Oh, 
that be a... Did I catch it? Pokemon sidetrack. Pat. Yes. Cool. All right. What's my loyalty? I'm 89 out of 100. I need 11 more loyalty to myself. Now this is the one bit, the way that these connect, these connectors are basically permanent. Uh, I mean, they're, they're not actually permanent, but they're permanent. It's nice because they're waterproof, but they like, they click in and you kind of need the will of a god or a special tool to get them apart again. <laughs> All right, so anyway, the point is we want the 60 amp circuit breaker and the fuse box and probably the battery switch to all fit within that space. So let's see if we can get some measurements for that stuff. Uh, Explorer. That's what we need. Uh, they're not really giving me the the goods. Uh, I wonder if they would have it under their accessor wiring accessories. View all, why not? Red black bus bar. So here's the fuse box. Okay, so it's, I guess I could just use the packaging dimension, huh? Close enough. Uh, let's actually, yeah, we can just use this. I was gonna make a new one, but we'll just call this the uh, side quest. So if we're looking at this guy, what's the internal dimensions? Because it looks like it's got a bus bar. This has a buttload of circuit breakers, which is good. Specification. Those are reviews. <laughs> External. I mean, I'm guessing. Seven by seven by three. Okay, so if I look at it, it's a square. So seven by seven by three inches deep. Uh, boom. Nope, not you. You. He 
you are 0 0.7 by 0 0.7 by 0 0.3. Does it say anything about how big that plastic is? Ba -ba -ba. I mean, I'm sure that this is a standardized thing. So I, I should probably be using that to figure out what size it is. Fuse holder specification. So it has a fuse holder in it, or is that just it's saying that that's the fuse? I think that is supposed to be the fuse holder. Because it's got four wires coming out of it, but it looks like it has slots for five. Number of outputs, one. Number of inputs, four. So one of the things about installing solar is that, they, that in general, when you install solar on, on a house, um, you wanna make sure that you're under the eave, right? And you wanna make sure that any of your holes that you cut in the combiner box are on the bottom. If you have to, you can go in on the side. And if you absolutely have no other choice, you go in through the top. Like, but that's, if you go in through the top, there's, it's possible in some places that you're violating code and things along those lines. So in general, you want to go in through the bottom or the side um, and be under an eave. I wonder what, if that changes for a vehicle. I mean, that's rooftop. Type in location. Let's see. Panels. Where to put the combiner is your choice. Combiner box placement matters if just a junction or a breaker. I don't think one would usually put a breaker box on a roof. I noted as planning, blah, blah, blah. seeing much so I just kind of have to consider where where water would be coming water or you know whatever it is would be coming at it so 
realistically back here it might be kind of protected over here let's let's see what that looks like if I do this boom and I put a box there and this box is 0.7 nope oh no it is 0.7 Yeah, the only way that's going to work is if I put the freezer off center. And that's less than ideal. I could put it on the, I don't want to put it on the back. Actually, right behind, right behind this might be the best place for it. fit yet right but yeah right behind here may be the best place for it just put it right next to that I mean it it means that I have to run wires farther but it is a bit more protected I could maybe push this out just a little bit and do that or I could just go with my original plan and line it up with the front and push this back but going back here um, five by five. Oh, wait, no, I was going back to here. All right, so, oops. doesn't say really anything oh there we go I don't know again that's the external that's almost four inches what all right let's go back to that so 787 Zero point seven eight seven by zero point three. I said zero point three eight four nine four. Good thing is it's got these four as inputs. It says it has one output. If I'm looking at this, that means it's on the other side, but if I'm looking at this. Oh, okay. So these are the inputs. What's the four star?
First thing you have to do, I had to know. Squirrel. Let's see, did we get a squirrel? We got a squirrel. Fantastic. Bad. <laughs> mm, fun. Alright, back at the ranch. As others have noted, first thing you have to do when you receive it is move the fuse holders and breakers on the bus bar. If you don't, you'll find that you that should you ever have to replace the fuse, you will not be able to. As well, the fuse holder pinches the ground strap. And this is still the... No, this is 140. What? Uh, oh, wait, but this is Canadian. I think that's what that means, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I need... Uh, is that... One dollar is one point three nine. Wow. I feel like that used to be a whole lot closer. Yeah. Well, that's not a whole lot closer though. What are you doing, Canada? What's going on? Go the other way around. So that's 72 cents. That's crazy though that this in Canadian is basically double. I don't think that's the same box. Can't be the same box, right? Show me a bottom view of the box. Come on. Why do you have a hundred pictures of this stupid thing, but nothing from the view of where all the garbage is? I don't even know if that would work because I think... Uh, let's go back to the... The suitcase. What's the connector on this suitcase? Or is this another DIY? I'm making my own connector. Plug and play IP68. Effortless assembly. Yeah, those things click together real nice. Is there... Let me see. IP68. Solar connect... No. Connector. Tool. The removal tool. Yeah, see, they have they have specifically a tool for putting these things. Uh, it's just putting it on, though. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe they're just super easy to pull apart, but like... 
these things I find less than ideal. <laughs> like they go together real well, but as soon as you start tugging on them, like they're not, you have to be really accurate with tying your knot for strain relief and such. So my guess is that I am, in fact, going to be making a connector for that. Because there's the other side of it and that I'm not going to have wires just dangling, you know, and that, that may be a problem with this box. It's got these things just hanging out the bottom, just dangling out there. That's less than ideal. I think instead of this, I just need a... Uh, just a waterproof utility box. I mean, it's still taking me to Vivor, but... I think I need IP60. Uh, 67, it says, is waterproof. I think 68 is just to a particular depth. Pum, pum, pum. 67, one meter, one meter for up to 30 minutes. But they can specify an additional. So it's the same, but not. Let's look at this. Uh, IP67, first digit six, dust type, providing, yeah, seven, protection against temporary immersion. One meter, 30 minutes. Eight, protection against continuous immersion beyond one meter. Okay. So different ish so 67 should honestly be fine uh what's the this is 11 by 7 5 inches deep it's taller oh there we go it's it's got the internal sizing Let's adjust our little box here. To be 1.1. Not you. You. And let's make sure we grab a link for it. Just in case. Right. Oh, oh. All right, and the internal sizing, super nice. Is it though? Oh yeah, it's 258, so 258. Is 10.157 blah, 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 blah. So 1.015 is what we're going with. No. Oh no, 
what's this one? 1.015. And I guess we'll just have to center it. We'll get there. And then, where'd you go? Let's put you over here. And 168. is going to be 0 0.661 0 0.661 how thick the back is so we save that number oh no that's external height external this is internal and if we just count that up as this number minus this number becomes this number or our thickness so then we hop back over to this guy go up by 0 0.09 and we make a hole see see uh -huh. that only took forever that's including oh yeah it looks like it is that's including the the back panel now one thing that that probably means everything in here is plastic so it's a mounting plate so then I'm also going to need a uh, DC fuse not fuse DC breaker bar uh not no dc breaker maybe it doesn't need to be dc maybe i can just say breaker oop unidentified ghost 
squirrel. I don't know what my current status of Ultra Balls is, so I should probably be considering that. Oh, the ghost got registered in my Pokedex. Oh wait, that doesn't matter with these. Let's see. A black Gengar? I like it. That's kind of cool. What is a Sin Geg a Gengar though? Is Gengar a dead Clefable? <laughs> yes. So what... What is the variation of a Gengar that's sin? Gengar EX... Okay, I don't know. I guess I just deal with it. I guess I'm just happy. I get happy to be here, right? It didn't get me a pumpkin. Can I buy pumpkins? No. Let's buy 10 of those, just to make sure we've got them. Because right now, I have 91 loyal to myself. I need nine more, nine more loyal. Um, circuit breaker bar. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a chunk of metal, right? A bus power bar? It's a chunk of metal with notches in it. Like, that's the... I can't tell... That's kind of funny because this looks exactly <laughs> like the Renogy fuse box. Like it seems like they're using that exact same picture. Uh, wiring and accessories. Power management? No. I think it was, it was under wiring accessories. Right? Is that not the... Where'd it go? Well, I guess not. I mean, I suppose, how many ways can you make the same thing, right? Anyway, um, but that's not what I'm looking for. What I am looking for is 1P bus bar pure copper for schools, hospital, hotel, home. But when I see that, that always concerns me. Uh, 
And what do they have? Because if I look at this and I go back to, I really should just leave this window open. If I go back to here, I go to the Pioneer Kit and I say learn more and I change it to the Pioneer Kit again. They just have the fuse, but they also, it's, yeah, eight's a 60 amp circuit breaker. I wish that they had links, oops, to each one of the things that are in there because they have to sell them individually, right? but that looks closer to the picture, right? Okay. Let's see if Google search is any better. Try that. 20 amp, 60 amp, there we go. I mean, that's an external one. Does it say it's ATV inline fuse with manual reset, waterproof DC 12 volt, 60 amp. Okay. And is that what is, I should have just left the page open. I mean, that looks suspiciously like the one that's in there, right? I'm sure they're all made at the same factory kind of deal, but okay. So technically, that doesn't need its own box. I'd feel better if it was in its own box, but I can at least get an idea of the size of the thing. And I also wonder, could I put a breaker on the other side? I should put a breaker on the other side. Although, doesn't the... There is a part of me that says that number 12 here, the inverter will act as a breaker. It'll just cut out if it's pulling too much, right? To the location, mount the inverter. Connect the inverter to the electrical system. Follow the inverter manufacturers. Okay. Let's look at the inverter manufacturers.
we're looking at the 2000 watt 12 volt. I think it's this one. 12 volt pure sign. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Inverter only. Let's look at the download. Warranty manual. Product wiring diagram. There we go. Yeah, cool. Just plug them in. It'll be fine. There we go. Sub panel. Okay. So this is the 1000. We need the 2000. 2000 does show going to a sub panel, but that it's optional. So I would probably want to do a solar sub panel. Well, kind of. I would basically just put probably two fuses in here, maybe three. Because I'd want a fuse specifically for the freezer. Probably a fuse if I'm going to go with the motors. Well, the, but that's not going to be DC or AC. That'll be 12 volt DC. Let's think this through. All right, so Off-road AC sub panel. What would you put in there? Okay, that's kind of cool though. <laughs> I don't know why it has a handle. Is this just a Only IP fifty four. Environmentally friendly. The waterproof grade of shell is IP sixty five. It's equipped with four waterproof sockets the overall protection is 54 splashing water rain dust snow oil the input voltage of the power box is 110 So this, let's look at this. I don't, and now I don't think this is what I want because everything's external. So basically I've got to pop those open and plug in everything. I don't think I like that. I want to, I want those to basically be permanent. Squirrel. Dang, 
I don't think I caught that one. Double check. No matter how many times I refresh, it doesn't magically show up. <laughs> this side. So that's power in. And then, yeah, no, that's I, cool. Not entirely out of the question, but not what I'm looking for. Three hundred amp to fifty. Blue Sea systems great. I believe it. Yeah, nope. Nope, nope. This is off grid under bench AC. Yeah. It looks like everyone who's doing this is talking about something else. But it does look like, based on this, if I'm using this secondary guy here, I'm going to a sub panel. But I also kind of feel like I can put a sub panel in one of these guys. I think from a from a mental perspective, it's a good idea to separate AC and DC, but is that a requirement? To be... I can't think of any particular reason. metal is grounded to put on the positive for practical. Okay, whatever. Here we go. But I must separate the AC and DC. Allowed AC and DC in the same pendant as long as the voltage rating is equal or greater. This is, wow. 20 years old. Uh, it's not AC. AC is not apply. Generally speaking, there is no requirement. Okay. Again, 20 years old. Random thing on the internet. Uh, just forcing myself to agree. Find something I agree with. Are you aware that you can't wire the outputs together? I think if I just put... Basically, this is going to be one bus bar, which I think they have combiner box, fuse box, no they don't, okay, but I think they have a, basically a, a bus bar sort of thing as well, so I would just need two bus bars. Bar. 
Yeah, they look like that. So you can just kind of click them in. And like that. I just need to make sure that my breakers have the same setup. And now it's a power distribution block. Miniature circuit. I mean, that's the breaker, but. I mean, I need what's under here. <laughs> myself. Uh, yes. I mean, at the end of the day, now I'm coming back to this. I suppose I could just not use these. They make plugs. I could just plug it. The only reason I'm leaning that way is that it just already got the breaker bar in place. Like where's the what's in the box? generator. Huh. That's hella cheap. This is something I've really been considering trying here. I mean, 800 watts, if it's windy enough. I doubt you'd ever be able to put this on a home system, but... That's crazy that that's that cheap. No, no, I don't need another project. Knock it off. Up to 35%. No! The world hates me. Might just be going back to this Vivor box, honestly. Actually, I know I just I just left them behind, but they have other ones, right? So that's a four string, six string. Do they have anything that's like a two string? <laughs> 
four string 10 amp, 15 amp. Four string with 15 amp rated current fuse. So this includes the fuses. That's kind of the downside is that uh, mine's a little bit different. Mine is basically just gonna be one of these. To the controller. I don't really need a solar combiner box. I need the other side of it. just need a plastic can you even do a plastic uh, 20 volt sub panel you outdoor electric like, if this already has, it doesn't. I was really hoping it would just already have the box. These bars. This does say waterproof indoor outdoor. It's way bigger than I need. Not easily degraded to have a smaller version. Cause see, this is no, those are just the uh, never mind. Those are the mounting plates. Those are not what I thought they were. Electrical enclosure. I need something teeny, like real teeny. That's pretty teeny. That might be too teeny. Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> I thought I had a a bit older inside for, you know, reasons. Yeah, see, that's a, it's a junction box. I don't need a junction box. Uh, power outlet? No. These guys make everything. <laughs> I do want a weather station, but that's not helpful. <laughs> well, this is electrical and panel. I need cable conduit, inverter. Boxes, panels, and fittings, enclosure. It's not really an outlet box. Kind of is. Squirrel. It's another Esper, so I don't know if pink 
Aha. Cut. And I am currently 92 loyal to myself. Let's do I mean it's basically this. I need something that has the cutouts and has this bar. But I need something small. I would prefer it not be metal. Circuit breaker distributor box. What's inside? Okay. With clear cover, bus bars, and din rail for indoor and outdoor. So is the four way two pole din. This is a four way bus bar and din. That's basically what I need, but I think that is a six way. And I say need like need, but It's IP sixty five. I mean, I hope I'm not stuck on which circuit breakers I can use. Now my, you know I had to have an issue with it as well, right? It couldn't just be like, this is perfect. I'll take two. This doesn't get me to the DC side. This only gets me the AC side. And the AC side, realistically, I'm going to have three outlets. This allows us to maintain the connect to a power pedestal on the dock and run appliances and charge batteries. DIY shore power, this is what I'm looking for. New smart plug alternative. I like it. That I like. Uh, well, docks for smaller boats are 30 amp. Docks for larger are 50. Not worried about that. Center is not a tools. Uh, you're connecting to a light gauge extension cord. protection that's gonna be important
using an approved shore power cord and not as okay so i will have to look at having gfci that seems like a hack though <laughs> Oh, here we go. Circuit breaker required for shore power. I would. Here's an example. Nice. And this is the one I was just looking at? No. They just used pictures from the one I was just looking at. It's inside the boat. The wiring for 30 amps needs to be 10. Okay. ABYC allows a maximum of 10 feet between the deck inlet and the main circuit breaker. What is the ABYC? Something, something, something code? Yeah, we'll go with that. Since this design is for a small boat, we need to assume that it's 10 feet. The main breaker needs to be... What? Triplex. Oh, okay. For 30 amp service, the wire between the main breaker, or before, okay. So we need to make sure and think about that. Before going to the main breaker panel, you should seriously consider a galvanic isolator. Between your boat and the dock, isolating you from problems in the marina caused by other boats or the dock and reduce loss of zinc anodes. I'm not too worried about I'm not too worried about the the dock resting my trailer. I need to have 30 amp double pole main breaker in a 30 ELCI trip. $160. I just want to not burn everything down. That's kind of an interesting setup. Might be a little bit better than dealing with the full size breakers, but. Well, they're still full size. They're just hidden underneath there. As a requirement above and also as two fifteen amp for distribution circuits. Actually, what am I thinking? The freezer is going to be on its own circuit anyway. That's it's DC. This is really just for two outlets and then to make sure that if I plug in to an external, I have. So let's let's. Let's go back to this. Um, Cause this is all going into the charge controller, which is 500 amp component. How did I miss that? Where were you guys on that? Where's our 500 amp combiner box. Five strings. Okay, so is that not that one is that that's this one 
Okay. It's already got my bus bars in it. I mean, at some point I'm probably just gonna have to order this kit and see what's in it, right? <laughs> Jesus. Great googly moogly. Alright, so it's got the can communications, got ground, LED. Let's see what else. Let's see. So if I go back down to this wiring diagram, basically everything goes into there. So what I'm looking for and the one thing that it's not really showing otherwise is power out for other devices unless that's supposed to be nine for the fuse box because oh yeah so in the fuse box basically you wire off for freezer whatever okay okay so if i want to add the shore power option that's where I've got to figure out. I think that would go through. I would need an AC to DC battery charger. Products, charge controllers. Because I doubt one hundred amp MPT. Uh, let's see if there's a. Let's see if there's just anything with the word "sure." Why not? Wave inverter charger. Woof, that's expensive. Built in Bluetooth. Yeah, I think this is. Holy cow, that thing's huge. No, that's not it. <laughs> Pure sound wave inverter with UPS transfer switch. I wonder if there's something in the instructions here for this guy. Let's see. Cause it's got like, I know it's got the, like how to set up the box and, and all that sort of stuff. Oddish, squirrel. Oh, it's like Oddish. Did we get it? What? Hmm. 
This is not true. <laughs> is this uh, an Electabuzz wearing an oddish costume? Is that what it's saying? That's the only thing I can think of. We'll see in a second. DC DC charger. Let's see. Renogy. It says I caught an Oddish. Uh, max versatile panel input. Smart charging and monitoring. That's, that's not it. Charger. All right, let's go to the great Google. A boat transformer. Plug your RV's power cable into your RV's convert. No. Extra money for a 25 amp red arc isn't going to break the building cost. DC is mostly unused, and even when I'm driving, it charges pretty slow. I mean, it seems to me <laughs> as though plugging the power in is there an inverter or charger that will draw from the solar batteries but supplement any inverter or charger does this the AC in You know, let's go back. That's the battery. Where was... Where did our inverter go? We were looking at a particular one. This guy. I mean, it's it's possible that it just does it, right? Uh, 
uh, 2,000 or 3,000. Okay, so the switch, power LED. Those are just the LEDs. All right. High output AC terminals. And then we have our AC outlets. Okay. We need to go back to the 2000. So it only shows AC loads on this. Oversize the battery, yeah, we know. AC wiring. Or additional AC outlets, okay. Black neutral ground, cool. Let's look at the other bit. Let's look at the charge controller. I need to go to learn more. I need to select the right kit. Solar suitcase, solar panel to charge controller adapter kit. This is the wrong one. There we go. Two places, two places you have to pick it. All right, so it goes there, goes to the adapter kit, goes to number three, the combiner box. Four is the IP67 DC DC battery charger. Okay. So let's get that in our mind's eye. It looks like it's got an additional plug out the back, so. DC DC looks like it's this one let's look at this manual Sticking out the Bluetooth antenna. Great. What are these? Can communication and mounting holes. So I've got panels, battery, starter battery. This is. When was this posted? How old is this? Yeah. No, that's not old. It's oh, only two years. Okay.
Oof. So this is an inverter and charger. Why is this getting chucked in here? There's got to be, some, I mean, if they've got this whole app and all the monitoring stuff, there's got to be a, like, I would like to have a notification like, hey, you're currently plugged in, right? But I think it's built around the idea of an RV and the RV system kicking on and it saying, oh, okay, you're charging the battery that way now, right? Let's see what's in the box on this. Because there should, there still needs to be something in this kit that is going to uh, sense that changeover and accept that power, right? Is that just this? Oh, what's this option stuff? 12? Oh, that's... Um, okay, that's just seeing if it wants to charge from there. So I think what they're saying is this number six here is what does the charging because it's going to sense it's just going to sense shore power and take over What's NPPT? I've looked this up before, but I don't remember. Maximum power point tracking. Okay. So let's look at, say... Yeah, we'll just look at any one of these, right? Grab this guy. Let's look at this manual.
Oops, I am muted. Well, that explains it. It just crashed. <laughs> It'll be back in a second, but apparently this mic picks up a whole lot of extra background noise. One of those things I suppose I should have been prepared for, huh? Setting the battery types. I mean, this seems like it's a solved problem. Why is this, like, why is finding the answer to this so difficult? I mean, is it something silly like it's got to be this giant box, or...? Let's see... Renogy... Using an AC to DC charger. Twelve volt thirty amp. No. I need to find an AC to DC. Using a setup for pump fly. through power if on shore power. It does have a built-in charge controller. Interesting, the default charge profile stops. Interesting that it's it's right about two hours that the uh, OBS Blade app crashes. That's an option to have it just transfer over. 
Although, that makes me wonder, can I just do uh, ATS? Do you have it? It doesn't look like they do. It looks like the the only thing I'm gonna have to basically work around the fact that it doesn't do that. So they've got the battery, they've got a transfer. Usually you would charge the house battery of your camper from shore with the converter. But that's an inverter. So I need a converter charger. Let's look for that. So this, but this says DC DC again. And it doesn't have any full voltage, blah, blah, blah. Very nice product, works great, except it's not what I'm looking for. 12 volts. So we'll input DC to DC now. So would I just wire this? It seems like I would just wire this into the same side. Uh, if I go back to the off-road again. <laughs> And we can go to the off-road. So it seems to me if I have that, where'd it go? Oh, I did uh, learn more, I guess. There we go. I'm basically just getting something like this. wiring it in on this side I guess I mean it could be on this side as well right then in theory I'm always running off of the batteries no matter what Not ideal. I would need to basically <laughs> just chop this off and wire it into my my AC circuit. And that becomes my shore power. probably doesn't matter what it's plugged into either. Because it's set, it, it's got profile, uh, sorry, <laughs> thinking to my, thinking out loud to myself. Um, it probably doesn't matter in the profile that it's set to because it would be set up as a diesel air heater. Hmm. That's another thing I've been looking at. 
RV water some. I don't know, all kinds of... This company just makes everything. They make all of the things. <laughs> Total power less than, well, that's, that could be an issue. I would need to bump that and probably need to get a bigger size, but. Let's just look at RV converters. Yeah, so I just max it out. If I'm using a 2000 watt. And then I just wire that in. See, I didn't think it could be that difficult, right? Although it just says lead acid battery for the output. Does not stop charging it still provides well that's fine because it would go to the mptt mppt is there an instruction manual to download Looking for a manual. Well. Okay. They sell this at Bed Bath and Beyond, huh? We're looking for this guy. Not to buy. They, they don't. And I'm, I'm back at the Canada site, which... I don't know why I keep going to the Canada side. So they have questions and answers. How do you switch the charging mode? That's, I can't unhelpful it. I thought that was show me more. The maximum input current is 20 amps. That's mildly, potentially problematic. that get added to it well I think that's probably gonna end up being what I'm looking for I should have saved it but let's see what else I got The homeless despot, a woobat. Oh, let's see. Oh, yeah, squirrel. Squirrel warning. Woobat. Average, average. How much time do we got left? 49 minutes. Oh, 
I was just about to say to myself, self, you don't want to buy some no-name. But I only know about Vivor because I've been seeing it so much in all of these searches. So, are they all no-name? This became a really weird sidetrack, didn't it? Am I sorry? No, not really, but it was quite the sidetrack. So if I do an RV, well, actually, let's check Renogy just to be sure, because I would think They would have a charger converter. One hundred DC DC onboard battery charger. DC 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 DC. I suppose I could do it. Let's see, what's what's common phrasing here? Like this company, they're just converter and it says RV power. They say converter charger. None of these speci specifically say ACDC. Like these are huge. But this says inverter charger. So this says it's an inverter plus the charger together, which hence the name. No, I don't want the, why would I want the warranty? Because I clicked on warranty. I know, I know, I know. Inverter, inverter, AC input terminal. I'm pretty sure that means that's what I need. I wonder what the smallest version of this is. Because this is almost double the price. And it doesn't look like it's meant to be outdoors. <laughs> just happens to be under sale. Okay. Oh, actually, they have a section of it inverter charger. They just call it inverter charger, not converter charger. So is this a situation where after I buy the kit, I'm going to be selling some of the stuff to... I mean, this shows a boat. Um, but I was looking for the manual. Let's look at the installation instructions for this guy. Wiring, wiring, wiring. And 
I guess there's also the question of does this roll into the Renna G1? And their wiring instructions are just AC in, AC out. How does that make sense? Isn't it also an inverter? C input. Two is AC output. Three is remote control. Where's the DC side? Okay, so it's, it's got a cover. <laughs> RJ45 port for future development. All right, so battery goes in there, AC comes out there. <laughs> but where's... 18 fans that dissipate heat I would hope so now, this one has an RJ45 but it does not appear to have Bluetooth because this is yeah this is the LCD so is this not something that's like an ongoing thing? <laughs> High compatibility. Mains power, okay. Battery temperature, dry contact. Husband thinks this is great. So while yes, this charges the batteries, other company oh there we go okay so it does it's got an interface with it right so if I go back and since I'm using the uh, my kit or the kit that I'm looking at is this 2000 watt oh yeah see it doesn't have that option so why does their branded one not seem to have the option it doesn't even have it here at all a second oh that's that's if you add it so the bundle is yeah no and there's no way 
that bumping up to one of these makes sense. And again, these do not appear as though they're meant to go in a vehicle of any sort. I mean, I guess the, the giant square ones kind of do. It is interesting that they're, they seem to not be all that concerned with shore power. And I think, I think I would just bypass this and, and go with what I was originally thinking and just have this guy kicking out 12 volt and let the MPPT figure it out. I mean, you'd think the MPPT would have a, a separate charging mode. Like, I don't know. Uh, but what I do know is that I'm probably going to be looking at... Was it Vivor? A company I'd never heard of until today. Well, not today, but until very recently. There's no reason not to go like this size and just wire it up. I mean, it's still kind of got that not really supposed to be outside look about it. So I'm going to have to figure out, um, not, not so much figure out, I'm going to have to put it all into some sort of container. which probably is going to end up being just one of those uh, mostly waterproof boxes that, you know, with a locking lid. But we're adding it. Um, let me go back to power. Oops, door, battery charger. Um, what is, what was the price on this guy? 109, does it have a weight? They are very sparse on their information. Eight pounds. Oh wait, no, one oh nine. Showed up now. Luna. Poke catch. I mean, squirrel, hang on. Let's see. Did we get it? Sweet. And a uh, slow key. The heck is that? I'm guessing Gal is Galarian, but I don't think I've ever seen a thing on their head before. I must have completed another. Yeah. 
the attempted catch. Maybe that's, huh? Okay. I'm just gonna trade one more of those guys. No, I don't know how. I still don't know how I got this guy. No clue. Whatever. All right, so. That was a hell of a wild goose chase today, wasn't it? I think, so I can try and get some food before the uh, Sharks game today, I'm going to cut out here. So, I have to say, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for hanging out this long. Please, if you see something that I'm missing, let me know in the comments. Uh, I try to be pretty good about checking them, if there are any. If you're hanging out on Twitch, thank you. Thanks for lurking. Next time, say something. Uh, <laughs> as always, have fun. I hope you find something in all of this and out there that's uh, entertaining for you. And I'm glad I could be that for just a little bit. Boom, shoop. For real. Take care, everyone.